It's Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, YK. Good morning, How Mariah. are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I love you. the purple combo. Oh, thank you very much. So thank how you was much. your weekend? Anything interesting happening? Uh, weekend? What? Nothing interesting happens anymore now. Right, I know. You stay, yeah, me, I, I stay very <laughs> indoors. Who did? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because the way I, I keep hearing mm. of oh, cases, I keep hearing of people dropping dead. Yes. Up, uh, even in the papers today, it's, uh, one state like that, it was the Edo or the Delta State. Yeah, Delta State. State. Mm. Mm. Really, really, it's, it's, it's not, it's not mm. a joke anymore. It's not, uh, it's, it has never been a joke, <laughs> but it's now a pandemic mm. in seeing. Nigeria. You know, yeah. it was worldwide. This yes. one is Nigeria's <laughs> special pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> like, people are always scared of you on the show because when you come like that, they get scared of this COVID-19 matter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the way YK describes this thing, you think it's another matter. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that's the thing. We're not really taking it seriously. I mean, the other day, uh, the police stopped me and asked me for a driver's license. I'd forgotten it at home. So as I, because I was near the house, I called the house. I said, please bring my driver's license. So he's not, he now says, okay, let him check my particulars. He now starts... So I now, you know, I had put on my yes. shield and I was like, you know, I, I do, why don't you look at them like this? I really don't want you touching. Anything. Says Ashebi is wearing mask and he was drunk, drunk to high heaven. Hmm. Should have taken a snapshot of, of his uh, I wish, his you badge. Know, I wish I had. And just fall it, Frank Mba. I wish I had. Honestly. Because he really? actually deserved to lose his job. <laughs> he was as drunk as anything. Oh he says, go and park. It was pouring with rain. Go and park. <laughs> Since you don't have license. Me, I just went and parked because I'm not going to interact with you yeah. in this matter. Yeah. <laughs> just because I said I didn't want him touching my particular. Because why are you stopping me? Yeah. Am I a criminal? <laughs> I thought they had even stopped uh, checkpoints. Anyways, honestly. Just, just be safe. When, when this police officer talks to you, just answer them. Because you never know. Yeah, I answered him. It's just that I was not ready what to. anybody's going it through. It was even someone that was driving that stopped and saw yeah. me. And, I, and he went and got my particulars. Yes. You know, but he was, he too was risking his own life because yeah. you, you be don't know what anybody has now. Exactly. Ah. Hi, Dean Mariam. I'm fine. First, let's do an exercise. Breathe in. Ow. Oh. YK, breathe in, please. I'm breathing. No, no, do it. There's Is a it COVID-19 matter? Don't do it. In. Everybody, everybody. Out. Well, good. How did that feel? Ah, good. Oh, good. Do you feel we good? We should thank the rain. See, today is World Rainforest Day. And we need to thank the rainforest that we're able to breathe in oxygen. This man, man. You a different planet. Yeah. Well, that's the truth. I mean, we, our okay, whole life. Okay, we have Sorry. Good. Our whole okay. life depends do, do on... Do it again. Do it again. Or you're breathing. Out. Oh, this is a good exercise for COVID-19. Actually, to test, to test your lungs, and everything. to make sure but you can hold your breath for a while. The only way you can actually. do it is if the rainforests are there. Thankfully, Nigeria was surrounded, oh, I've been auntie, 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 surrounded by auntie. Let me talk to the children because you see, you, adults, they don't <laughs> hear words. Fish. So let me catch you guys young. You see, the rainforest is so important. All the oxygen that we breathe in is because the rainforest takes all our carbon monoxide and it also makes oxygen for us to breathe. And a lot of our lives and our livelihood depends on rainforests. So you see the eye rolling and everything these adults are, don't listen to them. We are not really pay attention, of matter. Pay attention to the rainforest and it will help us. It okay. regulates our climate, it provides I thought you were telling livelihood. me to breathe in because I was annoyed with that police Yeah, guy. but the only way you can even breathe in anything good is because we have the rainforest. And we need please, to make please. sure that... You can also we, breathe in the As you are lamenting things, and breathing, like please remember that my birthday is July 6th. I cannot believe that my see? World Rainforest Day please, uh, talk please, has just please, been please, please. sabotaged. No, we gave you a few minutes. Trust me, you... you, 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 I, 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 you go and breathe in too much. You go and breathe in COVID-19. <laughs> just be careful. <laughs> okay, you can't pass it. You can't pass it by breathing. It's by touching or inhaling aerosols, not a... Uh, eh, your... Yes, no. If you go and breathe in... Actually, that's true. Yeah, uh -uh. That's true. Go and breathe in... Uh, maybe this table has it. You just do... <laughs> collect every... <laughs> 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 Next Anyways. time, police officer stops to tell him, breathe in. Oh. Anyways, I have to go now, but I was going yes, to... Yes, your birthday is July 6th. July 6th. Yeah. No, I've been getting no. gifts already. Somebody so gave me, somebody, somebody sent me something really nice over the weekend. I mean, small, uh, small gifts are coming in. You have done the adverts oh. well enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Because it's the big four zero. Right? You know, I never do my advertisement. Actually, you're day. right. It's, it's a big four zero. Mm. And since we cannot, we're not allowed to, I was going to lock down Lagos for my 40th. <laughs> I was going, I had gone to Ireland. I was already going to book, book God the saved you. You know, God saved me, honestly. I was going to go to spend money, it's but God since I, I cannot spend yeah. the money now. Me, I wish I had been 60 this year. That's how God would have saved me, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I really wanted to do a real party party, oh, but I'm since really looking God to said, that. No party this year. Uh -huh. We'll do Facebook party. Or be... Just be thanking God every day. Yeah. <laughs> Just be thanking Him. Be, yeah. eh? You, uh, you know, save me money. Yeah. Let's and go on a break. It's, it's just Tuesday. Health. When we come back, we're going to go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, let's start with punch. APC peace panel gets 170 petitions, blames COVID-19 for delayed sit-ins. Buhari assures APC governors of end to party zero crisis. Ogun council official assaulting woman in viral video arrested. Lagos sacks Loma contractors over widespread fraud. We won't impose Undo deputy governor on aspirants, say seconders. Two killed, banks, others shot as ocean cultures clash. FJ decides on interstate travel ban, others next week. Wadume, again, killer soldiers not in court, judge absent. I don't even understand what's going on with that Wadume's case. Mm -hmm. but let's take the human interest story. There are a couple. This, um, that video that went viral. Yeah, the, um, the lady, she was known as um, so Tolu Alleg Alleg Adesh. Yes. Adesh. Anyway. She had been going to buy a bike for her daughter, her seventh birthday, when they stopped her. She didn't realize she was at the border. And she was coming from Lagos into Ogun State. And they said, no, you can't enter. And they now um, wanted to get into the car with her. She said, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's, you know, the social distancing. Mm -hmm. So that annoyed them. She said, OK, she will get down and walk beside them. The husband will drive the car. They seized the husband's ID card. card. And then they went with them. When they got there, they said they should pay 15000 And she said, ah, that's on, on that what? Like, we don't have that kind of money. The next thing is they to deflate the tire. So while they were deflating, she started filming them. And they got, the guy got annoyed and started to hit her. And uh, we all watched the video. She was shouting. I'm happy the, I think, uh, the governor's office has actually responded. And they have been, been arrested. Not the governor, the um, local the, government, um, for local government yeah. chairman. Um, and they've arrested, and they've arrested the gentleman, yes, and hopefully good. he'll be properly prosecuted for That's what he did. Fantastic news! Um, then I have a story he has been arrested by the police. Yes. They have suspended him. The if a local government has suspended him, mm -hmm. so and um, hopefully he'll be properly dealt with. Uh, Loma? Yeah, so Loma, <clears throat> um, I think last week I took a story of the um, contractors that work with Loma and the audit that had been um, sanctioned by the government and uh, the governor to check into the dealings of contractors mm -hmm. and found out that, you know, they were inflating their wage bill. So a particular lady uh, was mentioned last week, her name is Iron Lady Wuraola Williams, mm -hmm. was really upset about this audit and decided to pack herself and all her workers as sweepers. They went to the government house took off all the uniforms. We are not working again. She says, I'm not working with Lagos State Government again. So government said, thank you very much. They too, they took her off, terminated, the, uh, yeah. terminated the contract yeah. and all of them that were found wanting, all of them terminated. They found out that she was making 46 million in Monthly. excess of what she was meant to be making mm -hmm. every month. Can you imagine and the amount of money this person was making? From du duping the state government, and then every time we we're crying about how things are not done properly. How the government we are blaming the government. Yes, we were it's our, us. Yes. Anyway, it was good that the gov um, state government. I think they had even did suspended it. them before she even carried her loot there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the government had already said should, people. More than that, they should. Be, there should be some kind of prosecution. It's not. It's one thing to sack yeah. them. Yeah. So, but they didn't say anything about prosecution because if we have so much evidence against you, hey, time to go to court. Mm. Yeah, you think? Moving on to the nation, anti Oshomale governor submits position to Buhari. COVID nineteen federal government laments set back in battle. Millions gone in Benin Oba market fire. Man kills lover and himself in Lagos. Oyo's plan to reopen schools insensitive, says Minister. Ondo APC asked um, Deputy Governor to vacate his office. 
Okay, let's story this uh, fire that mm. happened. Really, really sad. Um, they said that um, it wasn't an electricity spark because there was actually no light in the, in the wow. market. So they're still investigating. But it started from noon and um, went up until about 6 p.m. Before, yeah, I, I mean, it, it was really, it took some time to get the fire out. But they are going to be investigating to find out exactly what happened and started the fire. But the governor has been there. He's gone to see the place. Um, so at least I'm happy that um, they will hopefully help out those who have lost quite a bit of items in that market. And, and the that's... man that kills his lover, <clears throat> yeah, um, his name was Chris Undukwe, and um, his, his wife, the girl, his lover was Olamide Ali. She had two kids for him. They'd been going out for seven years, but it was a troubled relationship. So I think maybe he invited her to the house. She lived in Ogba, he lived in Lekki. He tied her up and then stabbed her, proceeded to stab her multiple times in the eyes, in the head. She died, and then he now drank poison. poison. I, I mean, I don't understand. Like, you see, the, if you see the picture, very. I mean, you know, normal looking human beings. Yeah. You, 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 you. But this is what we're talking about: mental health. Yeah. Obviously, the guy had a mental health issue. problem, and maybe the, she had realized it, and maybe yeah, every time he would beat her. Together. Yeah, Probably. she would beat her, and she would say she would go. Mm. Say, so this time, maybe it happened. She says, "No, I've, I've changed." That there's no, I've changed. Mm. Mm. God help us. When they are mental like that, they are <coughs> mental. End up with our um, the president has asked for us, reminded uh, your state government. Okay, I was going to take it somewhere. Okay, mm -hmm. let's move on there. Move on, on to Daily Sun. Southern leaders sue Buhari and AGF, demand 50 billion over alleged marginalization. Strange deaths hit Delta COVID-19 team. Mm -hmm. Buhari governor's plot solution as protesters ground APC secretariat. ECOWAS endorsed Akonjawela for the World Trade Organization DG. B boundary dispute four killed in Abia communities. Aftermath of defection to PDP, I won't quit as deputy governor, vows Ajayi. Okay, which story are we taking here? The major headline? Uh, so the southern leaders have sued our president for marginalization, and they're saying that it's about, it's about the lopsided appointment to certain security um, jobs that he has given to, his, to the northern um, region of the country. And they're suing him for 50 billion uh, or that he actually reverses these appointments and ensure that it is equ equitably distributed according to, um, to, to the, the, according to the federal char character principle that we have in the Constitution. That's pretty much that story. Did nobody read the Delta? I read it. You see, here it says strange death. When I opened the paper, it said they died of COVID-19. 20. <coughs> 20 of the ad hoc personnel died of COVID-19, but I'm not sure why the front page is saying strange death, when actually the actual paper did say uh, COVID-19. It's, it's still strange. It's still strange. <coughs> but the point is that the PTF had responded to that, and the reason why some of these deaths are occurring is because of the lack of quick testing in many of these states. You know, many of them were reluctant initially to, to, to accept the NCDC for, to come mm. and test and all that. So some of them are actually just dropping off Dead. Like, so like, they had found that earlier, they've actually been to treat them, and many of them could have survived. I was listening to a radio station today where the guy said his friend was working in Cross River State. So all, the, all his staff actually fell ill while they were there with coughs, they couldn't breathe, mm. all the symptoms of COVID, but no test there. So they went back, they treated themselves, went back to Abuja and tested, and they all had antibodies, they had all developed antibodies. antibodies. Mm. Okay. I think we could already test for antibodies. Okay, Daily Trust, moving on quickly. Rescue APC, Governors Beg Buhari. How long will COVID-19 immunity really last? Three-month-old Nasarawa baby stolen from mother's bed, ripped fights for her life. In fact, let us the only story we should take on Daily Trust. Please, can we take that story? Yeah, so a very sad story. Really hard, um, heart wrenching. Um, on the 27th of May, this mother and her baby in Nasarawa State, they were sleeping, and she says around 3 a.m. she wakes up and finds that her daughter, her baby, her three-month-old baby was around 3 a.m. She wakes up and finds that her daughter, her baby, her three-month-old baby wasn't beside her. She checked everywhere and couldn't find her and also noticed that her phone was gone. So she so immediately knew that it was somebody that had come and taken her phone as well as her baby. Anyways, got the neighbors involved. They finally found this child in an uncompleted building. Obviously, this three-month-old baby had been raped. <sighs> three-month-old baby. Hmm. They had raped her. And anyway, they rushed her to the hospital. Immediately, the doctor saw her and, and the state of her, you know, her a, private oh, area. They had destroyed her intestines, everything. They tried to fix her up, but they couldn't. So they had to send her all the way to just University Teaching Hospital. That's in Plateau State, where yeah. she is. So the Mara. sad story, yeah. Go ahead. in addition, 
is that they didn't even have money to put together for this. The mother said she had to sell her mattress to be able to get money and go to I the would hospital. employ Can you imagine? every lawmaker to buy daily trust today. I'm not yeah. being marketed for them, but today, oh, please send somebody to buy daily trust because the picture of that picture. child is in this paper. I saw it, I almost burst into tears because it's the most painful sight you'd ever see. You see, when you see this kind of pictures and then you're debating castration or not, automatically you know exactly how to answer mm -hmm. that question. So I would employ every lawmaker, especially those of them in the committee discussing this issue of rape, please buy daily trust today and see that woman's, that, that picture of the baby whose life has just totally been destroyed and shattered by somebody. And also implore the local government chairman, this woman needs your help. She shouldn't yes. be selling her mattress for this case. The, go um, the state government, the local government should support her and please let's investigate these people and find them and lock them up. Unfortunately, I think we can end with that. Stay with us, we'll be right back. That's depressed me. Very depressing. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So as at 21st of June 2020, 436 new confirmed cases and 12 deaths were recorded in Nigeria, bringing the total confirmed cases over 20,000. The cases keep increasing and are wondering what exactly is next for the country. Joining us to discuss more of this is Professor of Molecular Biology and Genomics Director, African Center of Excellence for Genomics of Infectious D uh, Diseases, Christian Happy. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Good morning, ma'am. Good to have you on the show. Um, this morning, we keep reading in the papers the fact that um, it seems there might be a new strain because people seem to just be dropping dead. Um, uh, we got reports on the Edo this Delta morning C. that uh, we were told that 20 people died. We're not sure. They, they said it's COVID-19. Delta. Delta. Delta State, actually. Um, we just want to know, help us understand more about this virus this morning. Uh, because we did read reports weeks back that we did have the same strain from China and Italy, but there's a possibility that there could have been a mutation happened already in Nigeria, and we could be dealing with a whole new virus. Could you confirm if that is true, especially because you are on the front lines? Well, thank you for inviting me to, to the show this morning. Uh, I just want to say clearly that um, about two weeks ago, we released a report um, based on genetic sequencing or genomic sequencing that we did in our lab at the Rudimas University. At the, the Africa Center of Excellence for Genomic of Infection Disease, for which I'm the director. Uh, we released a report saying clearly that based on evidence that we have at the moment, there are three different strains circulating in Nigeria. Wow. The strain, the original strain that was found in Wuhan in China, then there's a strain circulating in the US, that is a B1 strain, and then the B12 strain circulating in Europe. So those are the three major strains circulating in Nigeria. This is based on evidence that we have so far. And it's very possible that there are many more strains circulating. Mm. We also have, well, we also provided evidence that a virus, you know, has mutated. So there's a new mutation that we found in the virus. And this is a D614G mutation mm. in the spike protein. And this mutation on the spike protein has been associated in Europe with strong, I mean, with uh, more virulence or more infectivity and then increased transmission. So, uh, but the point is uh, in that particular report, we have only four samples that we found in among the ones that we sequenced, we're doing more. And then as evidence come, we will make them available. But then notwithstanding, I think what we're seeing in Nigeria today is not due to the fact that the, uh, we, uh, the, we, we're dealing with a new virus or that the virus has become you know, that we're dealing with a new virus or it's a new strain, that's not true. I think what we're dealing with in Nigeria today is the fact that people generally do not respect social distancing, that people are not respecting government instructions, and that people really are going around, I mean, to do business as usual. Mm -hmm. You understand that in this country at some point they say, okay, interstate border, border shut down. But if you move around, you realize for some of us essential workers, you see around cars filled with passengers moving around and then really the question is, I mean, were those instructions respected? 
And these are things that actually probably spread the outbreak from one region to the other, right. or spread the pandemic right. from regions to the other. Um, Chris, sorry, Miriam. What actually is causing this mutation? I, I, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Why we have all these strains, the one from China, the one from America, the one from all over the world, and then we have our own special one again. What is causing this? And then, sorry, I, I, I just wanted to do, because there are some people who have antibodies. Is it that we are building the antibodies and then the antibody, the strains are, <laughs> I, I think you will understand what I'm trying to say. I do understand you. I think the reality is that most of the cases, uh, all the cases of uh, the initial cases of, uh, of COVID-19 in Nigeria were imported. They all came from these different countries. And then that is a reality. I don't think COVID-19 existed in Nigeria before importation from, from Europe, before importation from, from, from America, before importation from China. And that's why we find ourselves with those different strains. Yes, the virus is mutating. It's a virus. And remember, it's an RNA virus. The RNA is a very unstable molecule, and the virus, I mean, RNA viruses are, are, are subjected to be changed, I mean, to change, because they are absolutely very, it's a, it's a very unstable molecule, and then it's, it's supposed to be, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually supposed to be evolving and changing. That's what we see in the case for HIV, that's what we see in the case of flu, and then we see for this case. Also remember that the virus is under, you know, what I call a human pressure. The pressure from the, our immune system, trying to get rid of the virus, and then the virus, because it's trying to survive, we also have to change and then adapt itself to survive better. You know, I mean, it's always about survival. Right. Now, talking about immunity, you know, we, I mean, people that are infected are developing immunity, but it's also been demonstrated clearly through studies that that immunity is not 100% protected. And, that, and then it's also been shown that people that have had infection can come back with infection afterwards. Right. So I think it is very important that people respect what, you know, uh, public health directives. People respect exactly the directive given by the NCDC and then the Federal Minister of Health, you know, okay. by, by WHO and then the health authorities. We okay. are not respecting this, but at the same time, we are the same people complaining. Why can't we just respect at least instructions, simple instructions. Right. It is right. when people are, I mean, I exposed, self-isolate, wear face masks. I mean, it's been clearly demonstrated across the world that by wearing face masks, we can actually curb down transmission. But look around us, how many people wear face masks? Right. Okay. Okay, yeah. yes. So my question now is um, the different strains that we have, what does that mean per, um, for us? Does that mean you have because we used to have um, seven to 14 days, you know, for the symptoms to show. Does that mean symptoms show quicker? Does, is that what is responsible for the fat, uh, f uh, fatalities that we have right now? Does it mean that is, um, we have more asymptomatic people? What does it mean really? I mean, what do you see fatality is related to high level of exposure, high level of infection and transmission. These are facts. And then it gets down, it boils down to one thing. Are people self-isolation, isolating? Are people going around like business as usual? These are extraordinary time. And then as such, we need extraordinary measures. So if people are not respecting, you know, social distancing, people are not respecting wearing face masks, if people are not respecting, you know, self hygiene, wash up, washing of hands and everything, we will keep transmitting infection. Unfortunately, okay. some people are on the line who have to pay the price for the, the, I mean, for the neglect of orders. And I think we have to be very, very clear about this. Following simple guidelines and instructions, you know, okay. save a lot of life. May I just rephrase, maybe I should rephrase the question. So there are different strains. We've said one that came from Italy, the American, and different places, and the one that is indigenously ours. What is the difference in the strain? What does that mean for a patient who has the one strain or the second strain, another person that has the third strain? What is the difference? What does that mean? Are we getting More sicker fitter. quicker? Are we dying quicker? You know, what does it mean? First of all, point strength. of correction, I never said that there was a strain that was indigenously ours. I said okay. the, the strain that are circulating in Nigeria were all imported. Yeah, so okay. there was no indigenous strain. Okay. Now, having those strains, having those strains means that there is a possibility that people, you know, with, first of all, what you see here is a situation whereby if you have underlying ailment, then actually you are more susceptible. That is, that has been demonstrated. So, and people with underlying ailment, if they get exposed, then you can imagine the case fatality to rise. Now, the mutation that you have seen, I mean, some of the mutations have been associated with increased transmission and then increased uh, what, I, what I call pathogenicity. 
So that could be also associated with increased debt. So, but then that is, I mean, that is definitely yet to be demonstrated and then show a cause and relationship effect in the field. But it's obvious and clear that if we just respect simple guidelines, this is a disease at the moment that has no vaccine, that has no treatment. And we've shown clearly elsewhere that, you know, simple, following the guideline, just by so fully doing social distances or physical distancing and wearing face masks can help bring down the transmission curve dramatically. Um, yeah, the okay. question is, are we respecting them? All right. Yeah, I wanted to ask, what is the, how, how good is um, a face shield? You know, can you wear a face shield without a mask? Wearing a face shield without a mask, I wonder where, I mean, whether if, 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 if a face shield can prevent air particles, I mean, prevent bacteria, I mean, uh, in the air particles that you are breathing. I think, I think that's, that doesn't resolve the problem. I think it's very lopsided to think about just wearing a face shield and then think that the air that you are breathing that is carrying viral particles will not get into your lungs. I think, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't make sense as far as I'm concerned. You can add a face shield as an additional measure to your face mask. But saying that you're wearing face shield only and taking out your face mask, I don't think that is helpful. Okay. All right. So, so let me ask about the knowledge we are, the, the study that's ongoing within our shores here concerning the virus. Our laboratories equipped enough, our personnel um, trained enough to understand uh, what studies are, are ongoing right now about the virus. What are we studying more? Are we still reliant on information from abroad or is that something we're doing that is a bit different from what we have out there? Something indigenous. I think, I think you should encourage and that you should appreciate the resilience and then the indigenous knowledge coming from Africa and then from Nigeria especially. Yesterday, if you go and check in premium time, we actually send out a report. If you said, <clears throat> check yesterday on premium time, excuse me, uh, on premium time, we develop a rapid diagnostic test that can, that can detect this virus within 30 minutes. This is uh -huh. very new. And this is not an antigen, an antibody, I mean, diagnosis. This is, a, this is a diagnosis that captures and that can detect the viral RNA. So, and, and these are things that we should be talking about. These are things that we should be encouraging, you know, creativity and innovation in the So, and, and these are things that we should be talking about. These are things that we should be encouraging, you know, creativity and innovation in the field. And this is exactly not just the case for Nigeria. I'm sure many Africans across, across the continent are coming up with a very innovative solution right. in order to address this problem. Excuse Early in the outbreak, five days within the outbreak of, I mean, of, of, of the, the pandemic in Nigeria, Myself, my team, and then some young IT guys in my team came up with a, an ear self-assessment or self-screening tool. But unfortunately, I think the government authority didn't catch on this. And this is a tool that could enable people to sit at home, right. just go through that, and then they will know their level of risk oh. and then decide whether to go to the hospital Fantastic. or not. That tool oh, actually had the ability to tell you which facility nearest you, and then also had the ability to inform, for instance, the NCDC where the areas where the people at high risk are so that we don't go around like blind people looking right. for just testing just anyhow. Unfortunately, I think, um, I'm not sure that they caught on this and, and, and it's a shame. Yeah, yeah, the, so re okay, go on, so go on. this morning I had read in the papers and it says that um, the antibodies or the immunity you get having um, survived the virus can last you only six months. I don't know if this is something that we have seen and um, please, what are your thoughts on that? I'm not even sure that it can last six months. I mean, where is the evidence? We've seen cases across the globe where people got infected and got reinfected. So the question is, can that immunity protect you and protect you for, 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 for that long? For some people, they will have what they call, I mean, for, for some people, they will have protective immunity, you know, which is producing neutralizing antibody, but not everybody produces neutralizing antibody. Hmm. Have these rap rapid test kits been approved by the government? Because a friend of mine told me that um, some rapid test kits came to her area. They tested them. They were negative. When they went for proper tests, they were all positive. So have these well, ones these that you're talking about been approved by the government, the rapid this, test kits? These rapid tests that we did, we just unveiled it yesterday. It has to go through the process of validation and then probably eventually yesterday. approval by the government. Oh, okay. This test has been approved at the US. It has been approved already by the US uh, Food and Drug Administration. All right, so if you are positive and um, after your two 14-day 14, 14, uh, 14 um, 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 
isolation, you get tested again and then you are negative. Are you advising that they should often enough we get tested just to be sure that they still have the antibodies? Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, the testing here is not an antibody test. What the government do and what we're doing now is even with the NCDC is you got to be tested for the presence of the virus, not the presence of antibodies. We know very well that antibodies are not fully protected and therefore you get tested for the presence of the virus. That's what we're saying. Okay. So if you get tested for the virus and you are negative, and then at that moment, you know, you will say you are free of the disease. All right, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your View will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. We still have Professor Happy with us. Waiki, you had a question. Yes, I, I wanted to ask, the rate of tests that are happening in Nigeria are not, as, as of yesterday, I think, we had only done 115,000 tests for a country of 200 million. I think that's very poison. Is there a way that they're going to increase this testing? And then the second thing, boosting, can boosting your immunity help you to prevent this, like... Um, Contracting... My partner and I, last, over the weekend, what we went and did was we bought vitamin C, we bought vitamin D, and we bought zinc. zinc. Because we, we, were, we are trying to boost our immunity. Can this help? Because we are both... Obvi obviously. Obviously, boosting immunity will help you to prevent, you know, not only COVID infection, I mean, we'll fight better, not, not, not prevent, but fight better COVID infection and many other diseases. Immunity is actually your first line of defense before medicine and everything comes into play. So I think it's important to actually have your immunity boosted. But I, I don't believe that immunity boost, boosting is only by taking vitamins. So I think there are many other things, your physical activities and many other things contribute to boost immunity. I mean, the way your, you know, I mean, your diet is also very important. I think all of those things contribute to boosting immunity. It's not just by swallowing vitamins that, you know, you think you're boosting immunity. That is who, I mean, that's, that answered that question. Then okay. the so, level of testing, I yeah. think we are, Nigeria is, is trying and it's all over Africa, the level of testing is not adequate and even all over the world. If you look at the situation in America, they, they, they haven't done as much, you know, for a population of three, I mean, for over almost 400 million tests. I mean, people, they've tried, I mean, they got like 25 million, but that's not good enough. And I know that Nigeria is ramping up the testing system, so they are bringing on board, you know, um, other networks that are involved in tuberculosis and HIV testing to ramp up the testing in Nigeria. And I think, um, yes, it is not where we're supposed to be, but I, I, I believe strongly that the NCDC and then the Ministry of Health, they're working very hard with developmental partners, WHO, UNICEF and others, you know, just to name few. Uh, working very hard to ramp up, you know, testing okay. capability and the right. system in Nigeria. Right. Yes, one of the things that also was discussed when we started, when we first got the um, the first case was that uh, would hear the weather somehow affects it. We heard a lot uh, in the beginning that, oh, because we're in Africa and it's sunny, we may not be so much as risk as other people who lived in temperate regions or really cold regions. And now we have the raining season, people are asking, what does that mean for us? Does that mean that it's, we are at higher risk because the weather has changed or the weather really doesn't have anything to do with it? I want to put it on record that the issue, I mean, the, the, the weather explanation for not getting COVID is completely flawed. If you look at Saudi Arabia with a temperature of 45 degrees below the shade and then Iran with very high temperature, they still have transmission over there. So it means that that argument is not tenable. So, and again, it gets back to our, our, our behavior as Africans. We always find reasons or for things that, you know, don't exist. We think that bad things are always for others. So we, we actually wish, we, we turn our wishes into realities and instead of preparing. So, and, and as such, I, I think that that is not an argument. And we should think about, you know, doing the right thing than to jump from, oh, we're better hot weather. Now the weather is coming down, things will get, things will get better. I don't think so. I think we should sit down and then do the right thing. Let's, I mean, do physical distancing. Let's wear our face masks. Let's wash our hands. Let's do the right thing. And I'm sure, you know, together, right. if we do this, and then if they, if they say interstate locking, so we should all stay where we are. And then to go and keep bribing police and then crossing the borders and, and, and keep spreading right. the disease. I think I we have... should just basically sit, sit down and stay put. 
Okay, I'm, I, I I'm have, um, see how this case is coming down. I have two questions for you. Um, this issue of, we've been going back and forth with the hydroxychloroquine issue for a while, and now WHO has thrown that out. But there's the dexamethasone that is, that, that, that's what they're testing with now in the UK, and I think um, it's being used here also in Nigeria. Could you just tell us how effective that is, one? Then secondly, because you are in the front lines, I'd like you to leave a mess, aside from the fact that we should continue social distancing, tell us exactly what you have experienced whilst treating and researching this COVID-19. What, you, what you've seen that you can share with Nigerians that will make them understand the, the importance of adhering to these guidelines. Well, uh, first of all, adhering to guidelines are very, very, very important because the guidelines are provided and then they are often backed by scientific evidence. And that is one. And then the new molecule that is being used for treatment, remember chloroquine when it started, I mean, there were a lot of, you know, question mark about the use of chloroquine for treatment of COVID. And actually in clinical trials, actually, I mean, not only in Europe, but in US and many places show that that wasn't really, that, that wasn't really effective. So now we have a new molecule. So let's let the clinical trial, let, let clinical, I mean, the clinical trial go on and then we'll come back with the evidence and then we should be able to know whether it's protective or not. And even if it is protective, to what extent is it protective? But then just taking the medications alone, I kept saying, cannot, is not enough to curb down this pandemic. Behavior are very important. You know, behaviors are very important. Let's follow the guideline. I keep insisting, not everybody can be can be taking the medication. You can't produce enough medicine. If that is a case for everybody to be taking the medication in to say, oh, I've taken medication, I can get sick. It's very, very important that we follow the guidelines. It's very important that we do the right thing. Now, in terms of, you know, in terms of, uh, again, management. So, I mean, for this type of disease, if you realize chloroquine is not, they will tell chloroquine is not the best, then it comes down to what, to supportive therapy. Supportive therapy, which means that they probably just make sure that you're not dehydrated to make sure that you have enough body fluid and also like diets and everything. That's what they're doing for managing patients at the moment. I think, you know, in absence of any vaccine, in absence of any medicine, that's what, that's what the, the, the clinical management, I mean, comes down to. Right. And as such, to avoid finding ourselves in, in, in the clinics, to avoid finding ourselves in hospital, Let's respect the guidelines, and we'll see that you we won't get sick, and we'll see that we won't be able to spread the disease. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I wanted to ask you: the is it possible if you are asymptomatic that you can pass the disease? They're saying that asymptomatic people can't pass the virus. The, the virus. Well, I mean, this is what uh, the latest information from WHO that asymptomatic people can pass the disease. But then the question is, there's a thin line between be, be, being asymptomatic and becoming symptomatic. So the question is, do we just, even when we're asymptomatic, do we follow the guidelines? If everybody, if you are asymptomatic and then you wear your face mask and do the right protection, you won't pass the disease. But remember that you can be asymptomatic today and tomorrow you start developing the symptoms, right? So if we all were going on and then following the guideline, it means that whether you're asymptomatic or not, at least your possibility to spread the disease will be very reduced. Okay. Yeah, I have one, um, one last question. Uh, we've heard of the um, uh, COVID treatment from Madagascar, and um, you know we're, talk we're hearing about vaccines from other countries. I would like to know if, in d from Nigeria, if there's anything that, that we're working on that's giving us any form of confidence right now on that's giving us any form of confidence right now? Uh, COVID, uh, COVID treatment for Madagascar, I, I mean, uh, if you follow the news and then follow the trend, you realize that that wasn't true. You can see clearly that Madagascar has a lot of cases and then there are a lot of people are dying. So, and then in terms of vaccine there, I mean, there are a lot of vaccine in developed out there and then, uh, and they have not started, I mean, a few of them have started some clinical trials. And as you hear, for instance, um, in Nigeria, there are also groups working in the space of vaccine development. Uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, um, we were again on premium time because we are doing some uh, work on vaccine development. We are not there yet, and we can call it a vaccine. We're basically just developing the necessary ingredient to put a vaccine together. Right. We're making, we haven't done a clinical, uh, preclinical trial that is testing in animals. We're doing this in collaboration with the University of Cambridge. 
So hopefully we can actually, once we provide the data, for instance, that, well, maybe the vaccine that, I mean, the vaccine candidate that mm. we are actually developing confer some protection in animals, then we start thinking about doing some uh, clinical trial, phase one clinical trial. Right. If we you can show that that can protect a human, right. then we can say we have a vaccine, but at this moment we don't have Vaccine, yes. We have to wrap up. Let me take a few uh, tweets. Yes, from... sir, there's a tweet for you. It says, sir, brief us on the role of blood groups as explained by the American CDC. Blood group O has less chance of contacting the virus. Cases in, is as a result of increase in testing. We should work more on finding the immunity against the virus. Well, there, he's asking about the blood groups. Well, I mean, we saw that, I mean, that report from, from, the, Afri um, from the US CDC that people uh, blood group that O you know, seems to be more resilient or seems to be less susceptible. The reason for that is not very clear. So I think it's still being studied. And then once we have the evidence and then we have, I mean, again, this is basically just saying that this is an observation. The mechanism mechanistically to explain the reason why people with blood group type O are less susceptible, you know, to the disease is not clear. So, but that definitely comes with, as the, 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 the person mentioned, with the level of testing. And mm. I think as we test, we're going to see. It's an observation. Is that the Look same trend? We don't know. Mm. It's an, these are observational studies. Right. But also remember that the trend in Africa is very different. So if you look at the number of deaths in Africa, it's very low. If you look at the number of, I mean, maybe we're not testing much, but it's obvious that the case fatality rate in Africa is much more lower than what is observed right. elsewhere. Okay, let me just get yeah. a reason for this. You. Yeah, so a couple of people are actually saying that um, the Commissioner for Health had said um, it's, it's transmitted via droplets, this uh, virus. But you mentioned something about air particles. They're saying, has the information changed? When she had asked about the face shield. So if it's really from droplets, can the face shield protect you? And if you say it's airborne, has the information changed now? The question is that when you talk about droplets, droplets are, are, are in different sizes. Right, so some will get directly, will, will heavy droplet will probably go, go to the floor directly. Some that are less heavy will circulate for some time. Those that are less heavy, again, the, the tiny particle will circulate for a long time. My argument is this. So if you have droplets in the air, right, and you are inhaling the air without protection, I mean, I mean, are you no more exposed than to just say you put a plastic around your, 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 your face and yet you are inhaling the air? I mean, where is the air that you're inhaling coming from? Okay, we have if to you're wrap talking up. To somebody yeah. In close, yeah, if you're talking to somebody in close distance and then the person is contaminated and you think you just have like a face shield and, you, and the air that you're inhaling contains viral particles, are you not going to get sick? Professor, honestly, I have to go, but honestly, everything you said so far, it seems like we are more or less doomed or someone that we, we, this, we, we are, it's inevitable that many of us are going to catch this. We, I don't even know. I'm, I'm a bit more confused. I think you've even depressed me more this no. morning. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, I, I kept insisting on the fact that let's do the right thing. Right. The problem I keep saying is that we are not respecting. We are not respecting right. Right. The, the, I mean, we're not respecting the, 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 the guideline. We are saying, if you look at the guidelines of WHO, you look at the guidelines of, of, of NCDC, <sighs> face shield is not part of it. People are just trying to do things for convenience. Face mask is what we're asking people. Go and check. We don't have face shield. Where is face shield coming from? Coming, co co coming from in this whole thing. Mm. Thank you so much, so much this morning for explaining and elaborating on quite a few issues uh, we've been dealing with. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with the professor of molecular biology and genomics, director, African Center of Excellence for Genomics of Infectious Diseases, Professor Christian Happy. Let's go on a break. We'll be right back. He hasn't made us happy. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Friday, the 19th of June, was World Sickle Cell Day. This disease is an inherited condition that is caused by the mutation of red blood cells, and they are at most risk during this pandemic. Joining us to discuss the effects of the coronavirus on sickle cell patients is the National Director and CEO of Sickle Cell Foundation of Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Annette Akinshete. Good morning, madam, are you there? Good morning, madam, are you there? Okay, unfortunately, we can't reach her right now, but I'd like us to go back to um, 
the information uh, Professor Happy was discussing with us. I mean, during the break, we we're saying that it was almost depressing to know that we have three strains in our country uh, and that uh, people have obviously refused to adhere to uh, the guidelines because of it's not convenient. That's the truth. Wearing that mask, going around with the mask. Some, some people actually put it under their chin all day. But from what he has said, even if with the masks, the fact that you keep going out, at some point you're going to contract this thing mm -hmm. because it's, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what's scary for me. Well, you see, there are yep. people that have not even stepped out that catch it. Why? Because people come from outside. The people going out are bringing it in. Exactly. You send somebody to the market, they're coming in. Even me now, once I hold cash, I have to go and wash my hands. Once I have to give you cash, I just put it back in my wallet and go and wash my hands again. But the wallet has been touched. I mean, it's just... You know, the, the, the bus drivers, they're not yeah. taking that That's 60%. The nobody's, and nobody's enforcing it. If you arrest like 50 of them, the, the remaining ones coming behind will yeah. make sure that they enforce it. Right. So you have to enforce it. Instead of police looking at only me in my car, asking me for my checkpoint, uh, my particulars, I don't know what concerns me in my particulars. The, he, the, the bus drivers are passing with overflow of human beings inside. You're not looking at that. You know? You know? So th there's, 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 we have to talk to ourselves. Right, right, if, right. You ha if you are going into a bus and the bus has more than the recommended, don't, don't get in, save your life. Save your life because... Yeah. No, when, when you listen to this, I understand we should follow guidelines, of course, and you know I'm a huge advocate for that. But, you know, my question is always, then what? Where will it end? What are we meant to do? Someone sent a tweet, I'm trying to get it. He says, okay, eh, he says, if a vaccine isn't found on time, everyone is going to catch COVID. Everyone, it is what it is. But the measures being taken are important to slow the spread for easier management. So I agree with that. I want to hear the conversation I really want to hear is about vaccines. That's what I want to hear because there has to be an end to this. If this is going to be a part of us, that we're going to start living with it, what are the things that we need to do? Apart from, you know, washing our hands, are we going to get suits, you know, that we're going to be wearing to move around because we cannot keep everyone at home forever. Right. We'll wash our hands, we'll do our best. We, you know, you talked of someone who had lived, stayed in a house for months and yet she caught it. The thing is, the way this thing is spread, there's nothing we can do. It's, it's droplets in the so air, you touch someone, so you will get it, but we need to find a cure or something. And get people a personal set of videos around, oh, use zinc. Use vitamin C. Those things are good. But also your diet, I think, as yeah. Professor Sarah Happy said, is extremely important. All the sweets, all the um, all the um, calorie, yeah. high calorie, Sh high sugar, sugar intake that we do, we have to reduce that. We have to make sure we eat healthy. All the food, food colorful fruits, um, the vegetables. We need to increase those things in our diet I because these are all things that are going to strengthen our immune, one immune of system. The main things for this COVID is exercise. If you exercise, you are. No, no, you're expanding your lungs. Mm -hmm. So they, it will not have time to be. Mm -hmm. So I, that is, I think it's since this COVID-19 that I have been exercised almost every day. Mm -hmm. When I do exercise, I feel sick. The next day, I start mm -hmm. I do. I don't play with my exercise. And I think it's, that's one of the aspects of living healthy. Right. You, Mariah, I've sent you texts. And Actually, work it. I did it. This the arm stuff. Yeah. I sent you another one. The I one both of them. Full body. Yes. No. I haven't. I did the arms one because I go and want to walk with Brown. We do that walk every day. But I do the arm arms exercise. I sent. Yeah, I sent like fourteen to my brother yesterday. He called me. He said, "Will you stop sending me emails?" <laughs> I said, "What is this?" Now? Okay. I think our guest is on right now. We'll come back to this. Um, Doctor, Mrs. Akinshata, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Mariah. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you on. I'm very happy to be here with these yes. two wonderful ladies. I love you. Thank, thank you, thank you. Morning. So we're very worried Why about... Why was I to be a first-time caller? <laughs> no. First-time guest, <laughs> I got to the show. <laughs> All right, so... First-time something. Thank you so right, much for your work. Right. So we're very worried about sickle cell patients at this time. Um, do they pose a high risk of uh, contracting the virus, COVID-19? Exactly. You know, for World Sickle Cell Day this year, Morayo, which was 19th on Friday, 19th June, right. our theme this year in Nigeria is uh, sickle cell disorder and COVID-19. Mm. Very important, very pertinent, because sickle cell, people with sickle cell fall under this category of people that, people with sickle cell fall under this category of people that they say are 
um, they have uh, underlying diseases or uh, comorbidities. So they are more prone, they're more vulnerable to getting the infection. Generally, people with sickle cell are more prone to infections, whether viral, bacterial, um, parasitic, like malaria, name it. Generally, they're more prone to these infections. But now, even for, for COVID-19, even more so. And if they do get it, they're, they're more prone or more vulnerable to getting very severe disease and even fatalities. So from the beginning, once we in Nigeria, and I know at, at least globally, um, we've been on very high alert, we in the sickle cell community, for everybody who has sickle cell, keeping a tab on them. So there's, we are saying that, look, besides the general measures, the general precautions that are out there, everybody maintain respiratory hygiene, maintain, um, um, wash your hands, um, use sanitizers. Besides all of this, we in the sickle cell community, persons with sickle cell, must do something else that we call shielding, an extra layer of protection. You know how you put your something in front of you to protect yourself from something coming towards you. So then an extra layer of protection known as shielding. And this includes number one, staying at home. Okay. Staying at home as much as possible. And um, we know it's not so easy in this environment, but we keep you know, ramming it into their minds that looks, this is so important. I, do you know that so in some parts of the of Far East, there's a mantra they keep chanting to prevent COVID-19. Something that they say to themselves every day, a certain number of times during the day, I must not get COVID-19. Hmm. So we in the sickle cell community, we've been on this high alert from the beginning. So what, was, what, what is shielding? Besides staying at home, whilst you're at home, you must also try and maintain some kind of social distancing from persons that you live with. And how do you do that? It's difficult, of course, challenging in our own environment where you have to we mostly share spaces. But they say, we're saying open your windows as much as possible in shared spaces like living rooms or kitchens. Spend a short time with other, other people. Use your own towels. Don't share towels. Don't even share plates and cutlery and all that, you know. And then if you have to use bathrooms, you, you do draw a kind of roster so that you have sickle cell, you are number one before others use it. And, and more, more than everybody else, you do all the cleanings, you know, with our household bleaches, wow. a household bleach clean um, railings, door handles, everything, right. speak and span. So you must keep it, we're keeping at the back of our minds that these people are very vulnerable. But we take care of our own. We, we, whilst they're at home, we say do not come to the hospital. Call on your doctor, call on your healthcare workers, we will look out for you. We in the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria, for instance, uh, we are open 24-7 for counselling. So we counsel all our um, clients out there. So because they are at, in need at this time, right? You know, so um, and you can imagine if you are cooped up at home all the time, there are psychosocial issues that are also at play. So we are we are working, you know, in in concert right. with other uh, experts okay, to let look me get after them questions in, and you. give them their medicines and mm. food. And I'm talking to you now. Today we're distributing food to persons with sickle cell all over Lagos through the sickle cell clubs. It's, they are vulnerable and they are also more prone to severe disease and fatalities. Right. And you know that's, that they've always said that um, COVID-19 is not, um, the case fatality is not so high, like 2 to 4%. But in the sickle cell population, nine is 9 to 10%. So out of every 100 persons who have sickle, uh, sickle cell that come down with COVID-19, 9 or 10 will die. Wow. So it's very high. We okay. look after them jealously. Right. We guard them. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, one of the fears I also have is for a lot of people who do have um comorbidities and as we said sickle cell the the, the problem they, what, all, yeah. they, are, they are talking about is they are unable to go to hospitals or when they do go to hospitals for other things that they have not necessarily related mm -hmm. to covid they are they are sent mm -hmm. back so um, what uh, i know you you just said that they shouldn't go to hospitals but what if they need to go yeah. to hospital is there an arrangement for people with sickle cell so that they get treatment we even in this time Thank you very much, Mary. You see, those questions are pertinent. That's why we're talking about the holistic approach to the care of these pe special people who have sickle cell. Not just for COVID-19, just generally. You know about the bill in the House, I think in the Senate right now, you know, talking about it. But it, it's a little simplistic. We're not looking at it holistically. Okay, let's narrow down again to COVID-19. We have told them, okay, if you do have to go out, because yes, there are times when you have sickle cell crisis and that cannot be managed at home. You go out, yes, but how do you go out? You have to go out with, with care and caution. 
you know, on your way to the hospital, you maintain all those precautions as much as possible. And, and we, I'm happy that we in a single cell um, foundation, Nigeria, like I said, we're in touch with all our people and to other NGOs. Remember that the government, I must tell you, you also know, I'm sure, the government is doing their bits, but not enough for sickle cell. So I, it's the NGOs like us, Sickle Cell Foundation, uh, that have moved in to, you know, to fill that space. So okay. we're keeping a tab on all these patients and watching them when they're going to hospital. And if they do go to get to hospital, they're taken care of. We in Lagos, we have um, um, sickle cell clinics in Massey Street Children's Hospital, in Bagada General Hospital, and in some other LGAs right. where they go to okay. receive care. I and they're not sent. Gonna break. Let me go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guests uh, on the phone. Madam... Um, you've said a lot about Lagos. Yes. You've said a lot about Lagos State's um, support for sickle cell patients, but we are very also worried about people living outside Lagos State. Does your NGO support them in any way? Is there a way they can get some of these guidelines? That's one. Then secondly, families and loved ones that have sickle cell patients, has uh, friends and loved ones. How can they begin to support? You said if you want if, a few earlier, but what other techniques can they begin to put in place to support or help those with sickle cell, especially during this pandemic? Okay, the first question was um, about how we are supporting those outside of Lagos. Yes. We have a network of NGOs across Nigeria that we work with. We call ourselves the coalition of them um, sickle cell NGOs. Mm -hmm. Because when, as we say, when spider waves unite, they can tie up a lion. So we're trying to work together. So um, we, in, we in Single Cell Foundation Nigeria, we have um, clinics in Asaba, Delta State. We have in Edo State in Benin. We have in Kano. Um, yes, but I think a couple of them are in Kano. And then we network with other NGOs because we can't do it alone. And that's as far as um, we can go. We're also working with government, mind you. Government is, is uh, it's, it's important that we work with government because they give that political will without which we can't really achieve much. We work with them and tell, uh, remind them that, look, we advocate. That's what um, what sickle cell is about, that they bring prioritize sickle cell disorder, bring it to the front burner, and remind them that they're signatories to international global protocols in the UN or, you know, or um, WHO, for instance. So we, we have to act. So we're working with government and we're working with other NGOs. I think the other question had to do with uh, what are families doing. Yeah. You know, sickle cell disorder is not an individual disease. Is a disease that is the entire family that needs to come on board, and which is that's how we counsel and that's how we manage them. We manage them that way. So from ab initio, families already know that they are part and parcel of a patient's care. So in in this era of COVID, they must be very you know central to helping them um, observe shielding because they can't do it by themselves. If you say okay in a, in a house where many people share. Um, uh, where we share a couple of rooms. You cannot leave one room to one person who has sickle cell. But okay, but you can provide a mattress or a bed space for that child or, or that person alone. And they have to cooperate to agree on that. So it's cooperation and agreement and remembering that they, they work together as a family to care for the person or the persons amongst them right. that has them um, sickle cell. So it's a okay. question of working together. All and right. we counsel them as families. All right, thank you. Okay. And they're doing that. We're following up and we're seeing that they're doing that. Okay, so I've been on this show two years, and two years we celebrated um, twice um, Sickle Cell Day. And one of the first okay. conversations we had about sickle cell is just Nigerians' attitude towards sickle cell. How aware are they? How sensitized are they about it? And what personal steps are they taking to sort of prevent having children with sickle cell? In the years that you've worked, especially in these two years mm -hmm. I've spoken, have you seen any change mm -hmm. in our you know, in our awareness about sickle cell and how to, you know, be careful. What, be, how to, I'll not just careful. manage it, but knowing what your genotype is and, you know, being careful mm -hmm. not to have children who have sickle cell. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam. Very good question. You see, um, over 40 years ago, when I was a medical student, um, sickle cell was seen as a childhood illness, a pediatric disease. But now, with, over the years, with better treatment protocols, we're, and you know, 
this um, crisis and all that. We're getting them into living into their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Even we had a mama that just died at the age of 94. So it, it's, it's, a, it's um, evolving. But let's get down to that, what we call prevention. It, like I said earlier, many people have tried to approach it in a simplistic manner that um, persons who are uh, carriers of the gene must not come together to have a child. The problem, my dear, is actually when there are laws, sometimes they're legislating and, and um, prescribing penalties against uh, persons who carry the gene, carriers, coming together as husband and wife to have a child. That has been seen not to work empirically. Okay, but let's look at it this way. If it's a more holistic way of approach, that is education from childhood. And, and that let's borrow from, say, HIV and AIDS, HIV and AIDS control strategies. There's more, let's borrow from, say, HIV and AIDS, HIV and AIDS control strategies. There's multi-sectoral collaboration. So if indeed in, the, in our primary school uh, curriculum, secondary school curriculum, we're already learning about sickle cell and how, it is trans, how it's transmitted from father, parents to child. It, it's not some, uh, something that they learn in later life or they just they, they happen that. upon. Okay, so in, in addition to that, the health sector has to also include testing, newborn screening, let us know in time what our genotypes are. It's not when we're ready to walk up the aisle that we start saying, oh, go and get a certificate, make sure that you're, you're not AS and AS. And what about those in the rural areas where they're not even aware that uh, there's anything like that? So it's, it falls again on us who are in the civil cell, in the NGO community. We do a lot of outreach programs to try and sensitize persons, but it's not enough. It is not enough. You know, it's something that should be kept encapsulated and captured in government policies. Without government, we can't move forward enough. Right. So I cannot emphasize this enough to say that government has to really come on board and bring sickle cell to the front burner, prioritize it, come up with comprehensive policies and legislation as well right. that take care of prevention, treatment, care, and even cure. Because we have a cure now. Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria has brought a cure for sickle cell to, to Lagos, for instance. We have a, a, a bone marrow transplant center in our, in Civil Cell Foundation Nigeria. Right. Okay. Dr. Bazwai has been doing it for a while. And there's what we call gene therapy. There's what we call gene editing. These things are happening and Nigerians can access them. We need we need more concerted effort. Let's work together more. Right. Let government prioritize it and work with we are ready to as as foot soldiers in right. the NGO community to work we'll for work government. Okay. Would, but let's would you prioritize agree, Would you okay. agree with the law, with that law? Stopping people with sickle cell from marrying or with the wrong, with the... I, 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 you see, that law, I, I go back again and say it is simplistic. Yeah. If you prevent them from marrying, why don't you say, look, what we do, for instance, with Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria is, is, uh, is what we call uh, genetic counseling. Genetic counseling lays down everything for you. No sugar coating. They won't bring persons who have a condition to you to explain to you what you're going to, what you're up against. So the, and then you, the, when, with that you make an informed choice. Mm -hmm. So the choice is yours. You're not you're not going to ram it down their throat and say you cannot. The way you begin to do that, what it does eh, eh, is push the disease into the closet. People be, again begin to hide it. Right. It's, it's it's something as evidence all over the world. Yeah. And what about genetic counseling? When it is effectively done, eighty percent of those who even in later life find out that that they're as they're getting about to get married, find out that they're um, both carriers, for instance, will go their separate ways. Hmm. So we have only 20% to deal with who say, okay, what we can now tell them what options are available to right, unfortunately, them. There are those who decide we can marry, but we'll, we'll adopt. Yeah. We'll adopt children only. Right. There's prenatal diagnosis, yeah. when you can determine the genotype of your unborn child in early pregnancy, which we offer at the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria. Thank there you very many, much. There's, there's all <laughs> implantation. We have diagnosis. to wrap up, doctor. <laughs> I'm so sorry I have to cut you off. I do apologize. We've run out of time. We've been speaking with the CEO, Sickle Cell Foundation, Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Annette Akinshete. That's all we can take on the show today. I hope you've learned quite a bit from COVID-19 and also sickle cell. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.